my name is Ojeli Bostanito Ben Ndi Obi C O N. Well, I met I met IBB President Babangida in 1977, and we developed a relationship that actually grew by the day. And um, through him, of course, I met quite a good number of our military officers. And we've maintained that close relationship to date. But I want to say, Kingsley, two things. Two things that he did. There was a, a gentleman who was in the military intelligence, his name was uh, Colonel Kunle Atugun, who confiscated my passport in February of 1984. And when I went to complain to President Babangida, he was then the Chief of Army Staff. He just said, look, Ben, drop the matter. I complained a couple of times. He said, Ben, leave the matter. So I left it. Like you know, they came in, he became president on the 28th of August, 1985. I saw him on the 29th of August. And then I asked him of my passport. And he turned to his right Another gentleman who has been my very good friend and boss to date, General Ali Mohammed Ghazal, said, this is the NSO. Go to him tomorrow and get your passport. And by the time I got to 15 hour law road, by 8.45 a.m., I saw the general at 9 o'clock. And he brought out his briefcase and said, this is your passport. Courtesy of President Babangida. Got my passport and went my way. But the one that really is so important is, if you recall, when General Chukwe Meka Odumego Juku came back from exile, part of the understanding with him was that they will release his father's properties. The properties belonging to Ojuku Transport Limited. Now, until he was released from the prison by President Babangida, nobody talked to him about those properties. Now, there were 19 properties, 19, 14 of them were in Ikui, four were in Jiare Apapa, and one was in Yaba. So I went to General Guzo, who was the NSA, and I said, General, I don't think this country has been fair to the Juku family. He says, why? I said, this man came back. They promised him to return the father's properties to him. They didn't. If it's punishing a Mekojuku that the country wants to do, the property does not belong to a Mekojuku. The property belongs to his father, who actually even helped this country at a point in time where they were in need. I said, so punishing a Mekojuku for what he has, what he does, what doesn't belong to him, belongs to the family, is not. He says, come with me, let's go to the president. Make your case to the president. And I went with him. This, this was November 1992. We came to Abuja. And the general took me to President Babangida. And I said, look, chief, tell the president what you just told me. And I narrated the same story. And he says, we will release the properties. 
and he called the Attorney General, Saklem Abambo. Release those properties, gazette them, and I will sign them. Now, between November 1992 and August 20th, 1993, the properties were gazetted and he signed them on the 24th of August, 1993. So from November to August, it was a question of about nine months, all the properties belonging to Juku Transport Limited was released. One other thing there. When Nemeko Juku was coming back from exile, he brought in his customized Puma, Mercedes Puma 600. It landed in Benin. President Yama uh, Seba, the President of the uh, Republic of Benin, Gassin Bias, they were expecting an official visit by the Pope. So they confiscated the 600 Mercedes Puma, customized, and used it for the Pope. After using it for the Pope on his official visit to Bene, he now reported to President Shagari that, look, by the way, General Ojuku brought in a vehicle, and they sent the vehicle back to Nigeria and kept the vehicle at 15 hour long road. He now, President Baba said, go also to 15 hour long road and take that vehicle and take it to America. I personally drove the vehicle from 15 hour long road to 29 Queens Drive. So you can see the kind of, the kind of person President Babangida is. And even in his interview, he said, I never lose my friends. I keep my friends, which is very correct. Very, very correct of President Babangida. So I, uh, it's difficult to find a man like that who interacts with people, love people, love company. You go to him, you wouldn't want to leave. He engages you, he discusses with you. That's same. Now, a question in well, you see, uh, uh, IBB, as president, military president, will go out of his way to even go and visit his enemies. Will go out of his way to go. He will identify a great Nigerian that he has ever met. He will drive himself to the fellow. You recall, when, as soon as he took over, he went to Park Lane. In Apapa. In Apapa to see Chief Obafemi Awolo. And invited Chief Obafemi Awolo to the State House in Marina. He did that with a lot of people that I know of. So, you see, what I'm saying here is that at a time like this, you need to engage Nigerians. You need to interact with Nigerians. I mean, even where, where the president is not doing that, one will expect that a good number of his lieutenants, a good number of his aides, will cover the track. But I don't even see that happening. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's part of why people say, oh, nobody's talking to them, nobody's engaging them. You, we have at a critical time of this nature where we are now in this country, there must be some degree of engagement with the people. There must be some degree of interfacing with the people. So that the people will listen to you, they will hear you. There are certain things that you will say that they don't even know about. That's why interfacing is necessary, you know, to bring, to unite the people. Because, I, you know, we are so divided, unfortunately, today. And it's a pity. So something needs to be done drastically to bring us all back together. Let us all hands on deck. Well, I must say that um, I'm praying to God Almighty to 
keep him in good health. I mean, you can see that he's still quite robust, you know, and all the faculties are very intact and sharp. And um, one other thing about him is the way he has held forth as a single parent. You will find the children always with him. You'll find the grandchildren always with him. So, I, you know, I, I see him as an accomplished statesman. And being an accomplished statesman, I can only pray to Almighty God to going to give him good health, wisdom, and knowledge. To going to offer advice and guidance to the younger ones. And a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people see him as their role model. A lot of people. So I pray that Almighty God will see him through his 80th on, on Tuesday the 17th, see him through the 90th in good health. We need we need the services and advice of President Babangida at all times in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe and like our videos for updates.